Welcome to the podcast, Let the Prophet Speak. This is Yeshayahu, Isaiah 10a, and this is Saul Weiner, your host. Although we are starting what is numbered as the 10th chapter of Yeshayahu, this is really a continuation of the previous chapter. This is another place where the Christian numbering system got the chapter numbers wrong. So this really should be called 9c, because this is really a continuation of what we were studying in chapter 9. However, because it has become standardized, we'll still use the standard numbering system and call it 10a. Isaiah continues to direct his words towards the northern kingdom of Israel and continues to point out their corruption that has become so pervasive, for which God has decided to entirely annihilate the kingdom. However, today, Ishayahu gets much more specific and gets down to the core of the corruption that is irredeemable. He has spoken so much about tzedek umishpat, justice and righteousness, but he elaborates further. Hoi hachokikim, this is verse 1. Hoi hachokikim chikike oven, umichatvim amol kitavu. Woe is to those who, who write laws, laws of sin, laws of iniquity, laws of corruption, and when they write their constitutions or, or their proclamations, their, their writings and their uh, legal decisions are all written in, 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 uh, in documents of iniquity and sin. How is this? The purpose of their entire system of so-called justice is in order to, to twist the law and to twist it against the poor, and to steal through just through supposed justice, to steal from the poor people of my nation, says God. Liot almanot shilalam vietisomim yavozu, such that the widows become their booty, and the orphans they're they they're abusing them and taking taking away their property. So why is this that the corruption has become so deep? What does it mean when you have a society that? which is lacking in tzedek umishba, justice and righteousness, when the courts, laws, constitutions are meant to further enrich and empower the powerful and conversely to impoverish and cause suffering to the poor. Contrast, uh, choose a document that we know of, a law document, say the U.S. Constitution, which at least was meant to bring equality and justice and opportunity to those that didn't have it before. Contrast that with, with, with laws and measures that were passed in order and designed to enrich large corporations, to enrich the wealthy, to exploit the masses. This is the true test according to Ishayao. Remember, the end of his this is the end of his speech to the doomed northern kingdom. Ultimately, what does it boil down to? If you build a society based on exploiting the most vulnerable of society, your society will be destroyed. But if you build a, a society designed to protect the interests of the voiceless, that will last forever. Just as he said in the end of the last chapter, in, in, during the last chapter, Then, Then you'll have a society that lasts forever. If you build a society and the leadership is built on the, the ideas of tzedek, umishpat, that will last forever. The opposite will be destroyed. Yeshayahu continues, What are you going to do when the day of punishment comes? When the Assyrian army and the calamity comes from afar? Who are you going to flee to? Where are you going to run? How will you save yourselves? In general, we know there are two ways, the Malbim points out, that people can, <coughs> that, that, that people can act when an invading army comes. You can surrender and enslave yourself to the oppressor, or <coughs> you can fight with honor. But now you have no place to run to. Your helpers are gone. You're going to end up enslaving yourselves. Your only choice is going to be to end up under the pile of captives. Or you're going to end up, <coughs> you're going to end up on a pile of corpses in the, in the battlefield. And interestingly, I, I, I want to point out here that he says... Um, Yeshayahu said at the end of the previous verse just now, he said, Where will your honor be left? In other words, what he's saying is 
Sometimes if, uh, if you're fighting for something in a war, something meaningful, then the death at least has meaning. Your death has meaning at least when, you, when, when the person dies, a soldier dies fighting for a cause that's meaningful. He or she can say and feel or know and history can say that they fought for something meaningful. But you, where is your honor going to go? You're going to be fighting to, to save this corrupt kingdom, this kingdom that takes advantage of widows and orphans, something you'll never be able to be proud of. <coughs> history will never look at you with pride. Everything will be gone, not just your body, not just your property, not just your kingdom, but your entire honor will be gone. B'chalzot lo shavapo, v'od yadon etuyat. B'chalzot can be translated in two ways. It can be translated nonetheless, <coughs> but in, in this case, I think the better translation is b'chalzot, because of all of this, God has not turned his anger away. V'od yadon etuyat, and his arm is still outstretched to destroy you. Um, and, uh, and this is, again, the same ending that he said repeatedly. Every few verses uh, would end with these words as he criticized the Northern Kingdom. Behold, those because of all of this, because of all of this, because of all of this. And this is the last set, one of that set. <coughs> because of all of this, especially the last one, which he mentioned, <coughs> the, the corruption, that is why God will not turn his anger away from you. And that is why the kingdom will be destroyed. This concludes... <coughs> Um, this uh, section. Uh, we will continue with 10b. Thank you for joining us. Looking forward to seeing you for our next podcast.